I can teach this to fourth and fifth graders and they can actually conduct this we'll is pretty see. straightforward. I'm smarter than a fifth grader. A good orchestra barely needs anything. If you just breathe in tempo, they'll start. Two, three. Boom, and I'll play. First thing you do is you use your right hand. Mm -hmm. no Even matter, if you're left handed? I'm left handed, I don't conduct. Yes. Really? See. Okay, see. There. I believe you. So the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna put in your, your right hand, kinda hold it. Yeah, as if you're mm -hmm. I don't know what else you would do with this. Pointing, um, and then you're gonna you know think about what it is you're trying to convey. At the most basic, we're not talking about any subtlety mm -hmm. here. You are uh, conveying information about how fast the music is going and how loud the music mm -hmm. is going. Obviously, if you move your hands faster, the tempo will go faster. If you conduct bigger, people will play louder. Most music goes in groups of two beats, three beats, or four beats. There are pieces like Stravinsky's written music where uh, you're conducting patterns of seven or fives or even eleven, and sometimes it will change every. Single I'm bar. Not that advanced. Yeah, that that <laughs> no one's gonna learn to conduct the rite of spring the first their first day. So we're only gonna learn those those three things for right now. Okay. So when you hear a march like a Susan march, you're thinking dun 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 dun. That's one two one two one two. So if you keep your arm up, you go down. And basically imagine a table, like it's an invisible glass table. Mm -hmm. When you hit that table, which would be just kind of like navel level, mm -hmm. then your baton is gonna bounce out to the right. Then you go back the way you came. So it's like you're kind of making an L. And that little bounce is called the ictus. That is the beat. Oh, by the way, if you know that ad, of course it's a PBS, so you don't have that ad, <laughs> but that, I have a structured settlement, but I need cash now. Yeah. <laughs> that, he's conducting on the wrong beat. They've had that commercial for like 40 years. Does that drive you crazy? This is very common in, in commercials and in movies. They just, why don't they look it up? <laughs> it's always like one, two, one, two, one, two. It, no, it's one, two, one, two. Now the thing is yeah. you always want to return to the same point. So oh, this is a uh, kind of rookie thing where I go, somebody goes one, two, one, two. That's, that, that's like you're drawing something, like, like, a, like a magician's doing this. Like, that, this is not a one. You always come back to the same place because you want the whole orchestra to see that. And you want to keep your arm moving so that you, what you don't want is to stop stop that means that the oh, music always... stops so there's always some motion Gosh, this now is next harder than... <laughs> this yeah but, but here's the next part a waltz has three beats mm -hmm. one two three one two down with a click but don't bounce yet then go to the right with a click then back to the middle with a click that's one two three one two Three, so like you, it's down, but you're not bouncing out. You're just kind of like stopping after a little bounce. Then right, then up, down, right, up, down, right, up. <laughs> See, that's not bad. Okay, and then four beats are very, very common. Um, like the Ode de Joy. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, mm -hmm. four, one, two, three, mm -hmm. four, one, two, and three, four. Like that's very common. So let's do a uh, four. Okay. This is the last thing we'll learn. We we'll go down, then to the left, then to the right, and back up the way we came. So down, left, right, up, with always a click. Down, click, left, click, right, up. Down, yeah, and if you use a little more elbow, that will help so you're not a stiff. So down, left, right, up. This is the most common pattern. The vast majority of music is in four. Yeah, so this is what you'll, you'll, you'll see all the time, conductors. It's a very natural thing. And you'll see a lot of times, like this is where I let the baton do the work. The joints, they allow the baton to move. Start here and extend all the way to your back. Uh -huh. So it's it's good to be able to actually just literally do the, the down, up, down, up with nothing but your fingers. See, I'm just using my fingers. My wrist is locked. Then you lock your fingers and you only use your wrist. We're isolating all the uh -huh. different variables. Down, up, down. See, only wrist right now. My fingers are completely locked. Okay? Uh -huh. Then you isolate this and you only use your elbow. Down, up. Down. No one would ever conduct like this, but this is so we've, we've got all the, the options. Okay. Then you isolate your elbow and you only use your shoulder. Shoulder, 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 shoulder with the same ictus though, the same click. Okay? Then you actually isolate your shoulder and you only use your back. Okay? Which looks really <laughs> stupid. It looks really idiotic. But the thing is, a good conductor will be able to go down where I'm using kind of my shoulder on one beat, then back with just the fingers for that, then I'll use my wrist to show something back with the wrist, then I'm gonna use my whole arm, down with my back, then just my elbow going up. Like all that yeah. might look like one, two, one, two, one. just if the music called for that kind of dynamic control mm -hmm. and range, I need every single joint working. 
You know, so if there's like a big hit, then it's quiet, then it's smooth, 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 short, big hit again, lesser hit, but still a little choppy. Then it gets smooth again, then it gets smooth with a crescendo, and then a day crescendo back down. And that's where your arm, your left arm will come into play. Mm -hmm. That shows expression. It does not mirror this. That's like when, when you're conducting a, a, you know, like a very large band in school, you might just do this to help get everybody in yeah. line. But when you're conducting a, a great orchestra, they don't need this. In fact, they barely even need any of that kind of conducting. What they need is expression. Are you keeping a long line? Do you want things really short? Do you want them accented but harsh? Do you want them accented but uh, maybe firm with a little squishiness? Do you want the line to expand and then recede but still holding it just a little bit? You see, this entire time I'm still conducting. Mm -hmm. I haven't stopped beating, but I'm just using this for expression. And every once in a while there'll be a, a section that's like, I need to be the one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one. Like then I need, everybody's gotta be uh, paying attention. And we'll go back to a nice calm thing and I'll let them play with some expressive gestures. I imagine they feed off your energy though. The energy is a big part of it. Yeah. Yes, that's that's a little bit, you know, like the, the coach running around yelling and screaming and trying to get everybody riled up. Yeah. But there's also only so much you can do once the players are on the field. Right. And I have to rely on them translating it. I, I don't play any notes, remember. That's I'm the true. only person on stage that makes no sound. So I rely 100% on them trusting that energy and then doing it. But I can't force it. I can't force anybody to play energetically. I can jump up and down all day. Yeah. yeah. But they have to believe in it. Right.